Our top story tonight, a police car veers out of control and jumps a curb while responding to a call. The consequences are deadly. And then a local lawmaker calls for tougher penalties for suspects involved in high-speed pursuits. Plus, watch as a trip to the gas station turns into a brush with death for one motorist. And a ship carrying Scud missiles is on the move again. You'll see where it's headed and why the United States let it go. Good evening, I'm Hal Fisher. And I'm Lynette Romero. Los Angeles police are investigating a fatal accident involving an LAPD patrol car. Police say an officer was responding to a backup call and struck and killed a homeless man in the Crenshaw District. Now, this was the third major accident involving police or sheriff's vehicles during the past eight days. Let's go live to Walter Richards in the Crenshaw District for the latest on today's accident. Walter. Well, Hal, as you know, police officers are highly trained drivers who can handle a lot of different situations. So what's happened here has raising a lot of questions about LAPD policy and the rules of the road. The possessions of a man who lived on this sidewalk and slept here right under the Crenshaw Shopping Mall Bridge. Last night, the final time that homeless man would sleep here. Early this morning, an out-of-control LAPD squad car struck him, killing him. The driver officer lost control of his police vehicle, ran onto the sidewalk, and ended up colliding with a male apparent transient who at the time was asleep on the sidewalk. Skycam 5 over the area of Crenshaw and MLK Boulevards as firefighters pulled the two officers from the wrecked police car. Both suffered minor injuries. The homeless man died right on the sidewalk where he slept. The officers, both experienced veterans, were responding to a backup call. Police officials say a typical backup does not mean cops should travel at high speeds. A backup call by department policy uh, does not require and should not be lights and sirens for a backup call. And this question put to LAPD officials, how fast should a backup response be? Following the speed limit would be a backup call. Accident investigators, upon seeing the mangled LAPD car, strongly suggest a higher speed inconsistent with department policy regarding backup response. So a lot of people stopping by praying tonight for that homeless man as police investigate this accident, and some community leaders are calling for an outside investigation. Back to you now in Hollywood. After a series of deadly accidents involving pursuit crashes, the LAPD will now be reviewing its policy toward high-speed chases. But one Los Angeles City Councilman thinks harsher penalties may prevent pursuits before they even start. Ted Garcia is live outside Parker Center with more on this police pursuit policy. Ted. Well, it seems like the LAPD is constantly being criticized in regard to pursuits. They're either too aggressive or they're too passive. But one, one local city councilman says that the focus needs to be on the person breaking the law, and he's calling for action. May 2001, authorities are led on a high-speed pursuit by a man who stole an MTA bus. That bus slams into a car, killing an innocent woman. June 2002, a four-year-old girl is killed when a suspect being pursued by officers runs a red light on a downtown street. And earlier this month, a baby boy loses his arm in an accident. Authorities were chasing a stabbing suspect when the incident happened. There seems to be a chase almost every day here in the Southland. And one LA City Councilman says all too often, the perpetrators don't receive the punishment they deserve. And I think the policy of this state ought to be put it in drive, go to jail, period. Councilman Weiss says under current state law, a felony penalty for running from the police in a vehicle is not automatic. He wants that changed. If you are willing to endanger the lives of potentially thousands of innocent bystanders because you decide to flee from the police, that ought to be a felony the minute you put it into drive and you ought to get mandatory significant jail time in state prison. Officers often need to make judgment calls in the field when they're in a pursuit, weighing public safety against the need to make an arrest. Right now, the police commission is reviewing the LAPD's policy on chases. It's expected to make a recommendation in the near future. Councilman Weiss has introduced his resolution to the city council. They will take it up after the first of the year, and then it could be on to the state level from there. We're live tonight outside Parker Center. Back to you in Hollywood.
A cargo ship loaded with Scud missiles from North Korea is once again en route to Yemen. U.S. officials are not too happy about it, but after a night of high-level diplomatic talks, they decided the shipment was legal and they had no authority to seize the weapons. KTLA Washington correspondent Grant Rampey is live at the Pentagon and has the details. Grant? Evening, Hal. Some might characterize the whole episode as an embarrassment, but officials here don't see it that way. Spanish naval forces boarded this North Korean cargo ship yesterday as it steamed through the Arabian Sea, buried beneath thousands of bags of cement, more than a dozen Scud missiles. The Bush administration immediately decided the ship wasn't going anywhere. There were questions about its flag, questions about its cargo, and questions about its destination. Today, though, a 180, the ship and its missiles are being allowed to continue on to their destination. The about face coming after the White House is told by Yemen's president the missiles won't wind up in the hands of bin Laden or Saddam. We had assurances that these missiles were for Yemeni defensive purposes and that were under no circumstances would they be going anywhere else. There is no provision under international law prohibiting Yemen from accepting delivery of missiles from North Korea. That doesn't mean, though, that the administration's happy more Scud missiles have found their way into this volatile region. The president doesn't feel Yemen needs all the extra firepower. Also today, in advance of a possible war with Iraq, the Bush administration's warning Saddam Hussein, as well as leaders of other rogue nations, that if at any time they unleash weapons of mass destruction, the U.S. might retaliate with nukes. No options would be off the table. And a similar warning was issued by the first President Bush 12 years ago, right before Desert Storm. Many experts say that that threat kept Saddam from initiating a wider, less contained war. Live at the Pentagon, Grant Rampey, KTLA News. Hal. President Bush is planning to make the smallpox vaccine available to the public. Administration officials say the first shots will be given to one million military personnel and emergency response teams before being offered to the general public. Smallpox was declared eradicated worldwide in 1980, but it is believed that Iraq and a few other countries have supplies of smallpox, and there are fears Saddam Hussein could use the disease as a biological weapon. However, there are risks associated with the vaccine. An estimated 15 out of every 1 million people could face life-threatening complications, and some will die. The vaccine may not be available to the public until early of 2004. Here in Southern California, a search is underway tonight for a suspect who attempted to kidnap a schoolgirl near Lake Elsinore. It happened this morning when there was dense fog. The 13-year-old girl was walking to school after getting off of a bus. She says that's when a man suddenly grabbed her, put his hand over her mouth to stop her from screaming. But she struggled and she was able to get away. She says she ran to class, told her teacher about what happened. And authorities were called and a manhunt followed. A composite drawing of the suspect was also distributed. He is described only as a six-feet-tall Caucasian. A Winnetka man has been convicted of murdering his four-year-old son. 30-year-old Dwayne West was also found guilty today of arson and attempted murder. Warren Wilson reports from Los Angeles Superior Court. The jury's verdict came down five days after it started deliberating the fate of a preacher's son. Judge Lance Ito ordered absolute silence. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find a defendant, Dwayne West, guilty of the crime of first-degree murder, 30-year-old Dwayne West became emotional, restless as guilty verdicts kept coming. Arson, burglary, attempted murder, and torture of the child's mother. The Marquise is dead, and that's something I have to live with the rest of my life. All I have to say. Because it was too hard to try to remember being choked, doused with nail polish remover, and set on fire. Her son, 4-year-old Marquis McDonald, died from his burn. He had been trapped in a closet of a fire-ravaged bedroom. For four years, West had been fighting paternity, refusing to pay child support until it was confirmed that he was the father from a one-night stand. Nicole Taylor was asking for a grand sum of $150 a month. He had paid in the entire lifetime of Marquise, $300. And at that point, he had made the determination to pay no more. This case was agonizing for two families spread from coast to coast. It's very hurting, and it's not just hurting on one side, it's hurting on both sides. After the verdict, 
They went their separate ways, perhaps carrying with them the emotional pain that could last for a lifetime, the same amount of time that West is likely to get when he is sentenced January 24th. From downtown Los Angeles, Warren Wilson, KTLA News. Comedian Paula Poundstone has been granted full custody of her three adopted children who were taken from her when she was arrested on child endangerment charges. A Los Angeles judge made the decision during a hearing this morning. The 41-year-old comedian was arrested last year after prosecutors say she was intoxicated when she drove children to get ice cream. The children were placed in protective custody, and Poundstone pleaded no contest to a misdemeanor charge of inflicting injury on a child. Today, Ms. Poundstone had harsh words for the family court system. The system isn't working well. Um, that's, if I learned anything, it's that. And I, I knew that before, but I knew it in a way that didn't mean that much to me. Now I know it in a way that means a lot to me. And, and anybody could get stuck in here. Yeah, I made mistakes and I, and I broke the law and I'm more than willing to pay the price for that. But there's a price beyond that that my children have paid and that's not what was supposed to happen. <laughs> Poundstone was sentenced to 180 days in a live-in alcohol treatment center. She has since returned to the stage to perform stand-up comedy. And just ahead here on News at 10, a Catholic priest accused of raping four boys walks out of jail. You'll see the angry protests. And then there's a major health crisis facing Southland children. We'll have details in a special report. Plus, a motorist runs for his life when a gas pump explodes in a ball of flames. We'll show you the dramatic video. And they are supposed to be happy cows. But activists say the award-winning ad is a complete lie. We'll have the big cow controversy still ahead. Plus, a brief commentary tonight, and we'll be right back. We believe that there can be only one of us. Now there are two. I'll show you our true nature. This Friday, it's going off to Earth. The final journey begins. Come fear. Star Trek Nemesis. Rated PG-13. Friday in theaters everywhere. As a rule, women don't know how to procrastinate. Don't have a clue. Yeah. It's showtime. My wife finished her Christmas shopping in August. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Most places that we go to do not have a good selection of gifts on Christmas Eve. Walmart always seems to have a lot of things in stock and waiting for us to buy. Stocking stuffer. Stocking stuffer. Walmart has everything. I know I can come in here and find what I need, even at the last minute. Exactly. It's a nice handbag. How do I look? <laughs> get everything you need, get it done, and wrap it up. That's fun. <laughs> be this easy to get into a Mercedes, but we're working on it. Come in today to the Mercedes-Benz year-end celebration, offering more models than ever. Going on now at your Mercedes-Benz dealer. You want this now, huh? Yeah. You want this? Go get it! It's gotta be the dog chow. Dog Chow is packed with everything your dog needs to build and rejuvenate strong muscles, so he can keep on amazing you day after day. Incredible dog food, Incredible dogs. Purina Dog Chow brand. Here's another healthy option. Bring home the great taste and smaller bite-sized shapes of Dog Chow Little Bites. No matter what size your dog, he'll love you for it. A retired Catholic priest accused of molesting young boys was released from jail today. Paul Shanley appeared in a Cambridge, Massachusetts courtroom. The judge ordered his release after he posted $300,000 bail. Shanley faces 10 counts of child rape and six counts of indecent assault and battery. Protesters expressed anger over the decision to grant bail in this case, and they heckled Shanley as he left the courthouse. If I were he, I would worry very much about his, his safety. I think he's going to get shot. I mean, yeah, I am concerned about security. Um, everybody that is in a position to impact that, it seems to me, is doing the best they can to uh, address that issue. Shanley once served parishes here in Southern California. He was ordered to surrender his passport. He's also forbidden from having contact with anyone under the age of 16, and he cannot leave Massachusetts while his case is pending. No trial date has been set at this point. 
Some service station gas pumps carry an important warning to set containers on the ground before filling them. Security cameras captured the scene as a man in San Antonio, Texas, found out why the hard way. The 58-year-old man is standing in the bed of his pickup truck filling fuel cans. Then a spark suddenly ignites the gasoline vapors. He runs away from the truck in flames. Now, bystanders try to beat down the flames with their shirts and jackets. Now, the man is hospitalized tonight in stable condition with third-degree burns. His truck and the gas pump are a total loss. In Orange County, closing arguments began today in the trial of a Los Angeles County Sheriff Sergeant and his wife, who is a school principal. They are accused of abusing their son, but they reportedly called their method of discipline tough love. Let's go live to Patricia Del Rio at the courthouse in Newport Beach for further details. Patricia? Well, this has been a very disturbing story. Allegations that the parents locked the boy outside, poured cold water on him, denied him meals. Many of these allegations the parents have actually admitted to, but they say this is a case of tough love of a boy who lied and stole and that they were just trying to keep him out of jail. Now, Sergeant Grady Mocknick and his wife Deborah listened intently in court as attorneys for both sides presented dramatic closing arguments. Sergeant Mocknick is a supervisor at the LA County Men's Central Jail. Deborah Mocknick is a school principal. It is because of their respective lines of work that the case has been so shocking that people in education and law enforcement might have abused a child so badly. Prosecuting attorney Pete Pierce outlined 20 overt acts stating that from the time John Joshua Mocknick was 12 until he was 15. He was continually abused by his father and stepmother. He even held up a photo Deborah Mocknick took of Josh naked to punish him. Defendant Deborah Mocknick made Joshua Mocknick, who was approximately 11 to 12 years old at the time, take off all his clothing except for his socks and then took nude pictures of him while laughing at him. Defendant Deborah Mocknick smeared dog feces in the school backpack and on the school books and folders of Joshua Mocknick, defended Grady Mocknick and Deborah Mocknick in excess of 100 times did deny Joshua Mocknick, who was between, then between 12 and 14 years old, the use of the restroom in the home by locking him out, outside. The defense says parents have a right to discipline their child and that this is a case of tough love where the Mocknicks were simply trying to discipline a boy out of control and that Joshua brought on his own punishment. He chose to stay outside. This emotional torture, this um, criminal conduct was chosen by Joshua. I can do my math I, or I can stay outside. I choose to stay outside. Now, closing arguments will continue tomorrow, and it is likely to go to the jury tomorrow. The boy happens to be living with a friend and his family. The Mocknicks, if they are convicted, could receive three years in prison. Live in Newport Beach, Patricia Del Rio, KTLA News. Two alleged computer crooks are under arrest tonight. They're accused of stealing high-tech equipment from schools and churches in the Santa Clarita area. But they got busted by some low-tech police work. Steve Grad is live at Canyon High School in Santa Clarita with the details on this story. Steve. Thanks, Linda. And I'm standing in what's probably one of the most secure areas of the whole Santa Clarita Valley. It's right outside the principal's office, Principal Bob Messina's office here at Canyon High School, where for four out of six weeks, burglars broke in and helped themselves to what's inside. Uh, anything they could kind of race and grab and get out of here was pretty much what they were taking. The burglars used the high school as a veritable office supply store. They took computers, monitors, radios, a camcorder, even miscellaneous technical parts that wound up in a cowboy football bag. But now it's in the possession of the Santa Clarita Valley Station Sheriff's Department. We've arrested two people in a series of uh, commercial burglaries at local elementary and high schools, as well as a local church. That's right. All these items were taken from Canyon High, three Sulphur Springs Elementary Schools, and even a church the Bethlehem Lutheran Church. These guys had no compunction about stealing from a house of worship. <laughs> no, no. Well, you kind of figure if someone's going to steal, they probably don't care too much who they steal from. How did suspects 20-year-old Juan Carlos Shade and 36-year-old Armando Infante get caught after allegedly heisting $30,000 worth of property? Mr. Shade, our first suspect, was attempting to sell some of the items at a swap meet in Santa Barbara. 
without first removing the acid tag identification stickers. Anybody that's you know investigating and actually looking at what they're buying is going to see that it's stolen goods. Like the off-duty sheriff sergeant who worked security at that swap meet, he notified his station, arrests were made, and the property was recovered. And soon everybody will be getting that property back, and it's another reminder for all of us from the police departments to put identification on our important property so if it ever is stolen, the police can trace it to you and get it back to you. Reporting live from Canyon High School in Santa Clarita, Steve Grad for KTLA News at 10, and now back to you in the studio. Monday night, we mentioned the use of chemical warfare against the Kurds in northern Iraq. Today, an article in the New York Times describes the suffering in Kurdish villages that were attacked by Iraqi jets in 1987 and 88. The Kurds claim Hussein used poison gas on them, and he still has the weapons hidden away. The description by the New York Times reporter of the suffering endured by the victims is terrible. Estimates of the dead are as high as 7,000 in one village and 20,000 injured and still suffering. Dr. Fuad Baban, an Iraqi Kurd who has studied the victims, identified 250 villages gassed by Iraq. 50,000 civilians in one village were attacked by Iraqi warplanes with nerve gas and poison gas. They were bathed in a misty cocktail of sarin and mustard gas. Today, a father pointed to his son, who was gassed 14 years ago when he was 11 years old. He said he cannot speak even a word now. He was a very good boy, very smart. But after the chemical bombs, he became this way. He is now 25, and he is less than a child. The boy Abdullah didn't seem to hear a word. His father, a Mr. Qadir, said... Nobody should believe Saddam Hussein. Nobody, not in all the world. Okay, class, let's focus our attention on the Space Shuttle article that is on the front page. Read the first paragraph and be prepared to tell me. We have booster ignition and liftoff. The newspaper is a living textbook. When you go on vacation, send your Los Angeles Times to school. Donate your newspaper to Times and Education. When you return, your paper will too. Call 888-465-2525. This portion of the news is brought to you by your Southern California Dodge dealer. This will be the best night of my life. Montgomery Brogan is spending tonight with the people who matter the most. He's going to prison for seven years. But can you change your whole life in one night? I'm going to be there when you get out, but you're not going to be there tomorrow. And it's all about tomorrow. From directors Spike Lee, Edward Norton, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Barry Pepper, Rosario Dawson, Anna Paquin, Brian Cox. Stay with me. No, I got to do one more little thing. 25th Hour, rated R. Starts Thursday, December 19th in New York and L.A. 1-800-45-CLOSET-CLOSET-WORLD space. Make your garage a neater place. We design and build it all. It's time to give us a call. At Closet World, we organize your home, closets, garages, home offices, and so much more. Any size, any design, we do it all. We offer the largest selection of colors, finishes, and accessories. We custom design to suit your needs. And since you're ordering factory direct, you can be assured that you'll get the highest quality at the best price. Installation is quick, neat, and easy. Call today and Closet World will send a professional designer to your home free. No one beats our prices. No one beats our selection. That's why more Californians choose Closet World than any other company. Call now. Get started today and get $100 off and free installation. 1-800-45-CLOSET-CLOSET-WORLD Call now. Whoa! Hey, uh, stop the music. Guys, everyone stop. We don't need all this. Kias are already a great value, so we got good deals on top of good deals here. Like 2,000 cash back on a Spectra and 1,000 cash back on Rio. Plus our 10-year warranty. What is that? 
It's a sales monkey. Visit your Southern California Kia retailers. Hurry. Offer ends soon. A growing student uprising in Iran threatens that country's hardline regime. Under circumstances quite similar to those that led to the 1979 Islamic Revolution, students are marching to protest the death sentence handed down by a religious court. And the death sentence is against a university professor who questioned the absolute power of Iran's hardline clerics. Religious leaders control the police and the courts, and they have blocked most efforts to reform the government. The students are demanding a national referendum to limit the authority of the Ayatollahs. A new report on Capitol Hill is highly critical of U.S. government agencies for failing to detect preparations for the terrorist attacks on September 11th. The joint congressional report blames human error, organizational problems, poor communication, and a shortage of resources at the FBI and CIA. And it warns that terrorists are certain to try again. Lawmakers suggest that counterterrorism efforts would be more effective if all U.S. intelligence agencies were brought under a single command. What our intelligence community needs is the equivalent of an admiral of the fleet. Each agency or ship has a captain, but someone needs to command the entire fleet. The congressional panel also recommended that domestic intelligence gathering be strengthened, but committee members were divided on whether that should be the job of the FBI or if a new agency should be created. Police in Japan are trying to uh, put a halt to some serious monkey business. The male monkey, a Japanese macaque, has attacked at least 23 women in the past three days. The monkey apparently hasn't been able to find a mate, and that's what's uh, driving him uh, to this kind of action. Now, he began chasing women on Monday, biting them on the legs, and several of the victims have actually been hospitalized. Police armed with nets and tranquilizer guns hope to capture the marauding monkey, but if they can't catch him, police say they may be forced to shoot him. Mindy Burbano has the night off, and an entertainment news and other world premiere attracts some of the biggest names in show business. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind marks the directorial debut for superstar George Clooney. Tonight's showing attracted headliners Drew Barrymore and Sam Rockwell, and even tempted international superstar Brad Pitt. The latest feature from Miramax is the true story of Chuck Barris, a famous game show host who claims to also have been a hitman for the CIA. And when it comes to leading a double life, tonight's attendees share their secret passions. Professional, professional basketball. Yeah, I wish I was a, I wish I was a foot taller and skilled. <laughs> I love Tupperware. I just became a Tupperware lady, actually, and I'm obsessed with it. I just had two Tupperware parties last week. Maybe a popcorn maker, popcorn a seed grower. Photography, actually. Yeah, I'm a, I, that is my great desire is to be a great photographer. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind is rated R, and it opens in Los Angeles on December the 31st. Nominations for the 2003 Independent Spirit Film Awards were announced today in Beverly Hills. American Beauty actress Mina Suvari was on hand to help host the ceremony. Lovely and Amazing took the most nominations, six in all, including one for Best Feature and Best Female Lead for Katherine Keener. Far From Heaven got five nods, including Best Feature and Best Female Lead for Julianne Moore. The Good Girl was nominated four times, also for Best Feature and Best Female Lead for Jennifer Aniston. The Independent Spirit Awards will be handed out on March 22, 2003. In television news tonight, actor Tom Sizemore's CBS drama has been pulled from the network's lineup. Robbery Homicide Division has been put on an indefinite hiatus and will be replaced with a new courtroom drama. CBS says the move was caused by low ratings and is unrelated to the recent arrest of its star. The 38-year-old actor was arrested on Saturday for assaulting his fiancée. He was released on bond but will return to court on January the 8th. Comedic actress Amy Smart and the Humane Society of the United States uh, give holiday shoppers the chance to shop for a cause. The former Felicity star is the first celebrity to join the Fashion with a Heart campaign. The innovative new project teams designer brands with famous faces and gives a portion of the proceeds to charity. The details on how you can shop for a cause are available at catchinternational.com. And well-informed sources report tonight 
the engagement of KTLA news anchor Lynette Romero and Los Angeles businessman David Angulo. The event took place in Guadalajara, Mexico, near the famous University of Guadalajara, where the two met several years ago. We know our sources are accurate because one of the sources is Lynette Romero herself. Anyway, our congratulations to Lynette and David from all of us here at KTLA News at 10. Thank you. We're no. thrilled about it. I know you oh. are, and I know oh. David is also. <laughs> There's the ring. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. We've been together a long time. We're looking forward to this. It's very exciting. I'm, I'm Thank sure you. Sure, you did. Anyway, That's very congratulations nice. from everybody here. Thank now, you. just the fact you're engaged does not allow you to just suddenly go out and party. You have to now no, give no. us the weather report. I have another man in my life besides you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I figured that all along. <laughs> Let's go outside and check on our weather. Right now, the Civic Center, the temperature is 54 degrees. There is 80% humidity. The barometer is at 30.11 and rising, and winds are calm at this hour. We had a warm high downtown today of 70 degrees. The overnight low dipped to 52. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 651 and sunset at 443. Well, while the stormy weather continues in the Pacific Northwest, we are enjoying sunny afternoons here in Southern California. Overnight lows will be on the chilly side once again tonight. But thanks to an offshore flow, temperatures will warm nicely by the afternoon. But the spring-like afternoons may not be around for long. A powerful storm is brewing in the Pacific and will likely reach the Southland by Saturday evening. This storm should move through quickly, dropping about six hours of moderate to heavy rain. We're also expecting surf advisories along the coast this weekend as we brace for a strong swell and possible coastal flooding by Sunday. Overnight skies will remain mostly clear as lows dip into the 40s along the coast. Palmdale sinks all the way to 32 inland. Hemet and Corona look for lows of 42 degrees and just 22 tonight in Big Bear. We're looking for an even warmer day tomorrow as temperatures reach the mid-70s in the Inland Empire. Elsewhere, Santa Monica reaches 69 degrees, San Gabriel 74, and Woodland Hills 75. And checking our five-day outlook, enjoy the nice weather through Friday because we will be on the lookout for rain this Saturday. Showers will likely taper off on Sunday morning, though, after another front is set to race through the Southland early next week. And then that's a look at your weather. Oh, you mean so we're on watch here for the rain? And this weekend. we're actually going to see it arrive. Just in time for Saturday. I'll believe it when I yeah. see it. <laughs> Well, the experts say the odds are so high they cannot even be calculated. However, we figure they're somewhere around a few trillion to one. A California couple won the lottery twice in one day. Angelo and Marina Galina got uh, all six numbers in the Super Lotto jackpot the same day they picked all the winning numbers in the Fantasy Five. The two lotto prizes earned the Galinas a total of $17.25 million dollars. And uh, Angelo has a very simple idea of how to spend the money. I always liked a little jacket. trip up the Mississippi yeah. uh, on a steamboat. Oh, right, what do you call them? Battle wheel? That's yeah. it. I, I like Swag. to do these, that. These are new. You're a, no. you're a multimillionaire. That's a very modest trip for a multimillionaire. Well, then I'll buy your boat. Go on the <laughs> In addition to the boat, the couple plans to buy a new house, a new car, and take a vacation back to their native Italy. Coming up next, here on News at 10, an explosive situation shuts down a major highway. We'll show you what happened. I'm Larry McCormick. Mammograms are vital for the early detection of breast cancer, but they may also be an ally to help women defend against an even worse enemy. I'll tell you about that coming up in my report. And see how that controversy over cows could put an award-winning commercial out to pasture. News at 10 will be right back. The Health Report is brought to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. It was about a year and a half ago, my parents passed away, and my wife and I, we just decided to bring my brothers and sisters to come live with us. There are 10 of us in the house right now. It's a fun place, especially around Christmas time. The lights, the wrapping paper, all the presents. Walmart absolutely has the best prices for us. We have to be very budget conscious because we have a large family now. Each person draws a name. We try to keep it really quiet. I cannot keep a secret. The shopping experience, it's fun. Walmart's great at helping us stretch every single dollar that we bring in. We can get the perfect present for the perfect person. I love Christmas. This holiday season, come to Albertsons for fresh Atlantic salmon fillets, just $3.97 per pound. Fresh red seedless grapes, only 99 cents per pound. 
and select varieties of cheer laundry detergent. Just $3.99. Hey, it's your life. Albertsons, it's your store. Once a year, Toyotathon 03. This year end tradition features the awe inspiring all new 2003 Forerunner. It's larger, more powerful, and now with great Toyotathon deals, you can get more SUV for your money. Only your Toyota dealers have the quality, selection, and values you've waited for all year. Toyotathon 03. Don't miss it. Wow is right. With Dish Network, you'll get America's lowest all-digital price package. Over 50 channels for just $22.99. Wow. Visit Radio Shack Sears or a participating local retailer or call 1-800-333-DISH for our free dish offer. The WB presents the real story behind the hit song, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Tomorrow at 8 on KTLA 5. The people for the ethical treatment of animals sued the California Milk Advisory Board, claiming the Happy Cows campaign is false advertising. PETA says these ads unlawfully mislead the public into believing California dairy farms are rolling expanses of green hills with clean, healthy-looking cows. Instead, PETA says cows live in muddy, feces, and urine-soaked lots devoid of vegetation. PETA contends the cows are repeatedly impregnated and chemically manipulated to produce abnormally high quantities of milk at a great expense to their bodies. Uh, the, the milk board's ads are a deception. They don't show the waste-soiled, muddy lots that are the backbone of the state's dairy industry. They don't show the emaciated, lame cows who have collapsed from a lifetime of hardship and overmilking. They don't show calves being taken away from their mothers and isolated in tiny veal crates. Really the lawsuit out. seeks a permanent injunction to stop the Happy Cow ad campaign. The San Francisco-based California Milk Advisory Board has made no comment on this lawsuit. More than a quarter of California's public school children are overweight, and nearly 40 percent of them are not considered physically fit. Now, those are the findings of a new health study to be released tomorrow. And researchers say that the biggest youth fitness problems are located right here in Los Angeles County. Let's go live to Ron Olson at the Times building with this exclusive Los Angeles Times KTLA report. Ron? 1.2 million kids were tested, the biggest test of its kind ever in the state of California. Los Angeles County did not do well at all. Los Angeles County, filled with health-conscious folks who love going out to the gym to get all buffed out. If only our kids were in this kind of shape, but many are not. A comprehensive study looking at 5th, 7th, and ninth graders says a lot of the state's children are in less than great condition, that nearly 40% are not physically fit, and more than a quarter are overweight. And Los Angeles County is ground zero. People were shocked to find that really the epicenter of this problem of overweight children is right here in Los Angeles County. The study shows that 26.5% of the state's public school children are overweight. Nationally, by rough comparison, the figure is closer to 15%. And eight of the nine assembly districts with the worst findings in the state are in Los Angeles County. What's the problem? Unsafe neighborhoods, parks that aren't kept up, too much junk food, and a lack of physical fitness programs at the schools. All of it is leaving too many kids without the right food and proper exercise, and that leads to concern about the potential for health problems. When kids are overweight or, or not fit, they expose themselves to a whole host of health problems, whether it's diabetes, cancer, heart disease, asthma. They're at risk for all of these things at a much higher percentage than kids who are in shape. What can be done? The experts say more physical education in the schools would be a start, but that it's a problem that will take years to fix, 
And even then, it won't be easy in a state with a budget shortfall that could hit $30 billion. And much more on that study in tomorrow's Los Angeles Times. We're live in the Times newsroom downtown. Back to you. And now a check on other major stories making news around the country. Miami, six baggage handlers at Miami International Airport have been arrested on suspicion of stealing from the luggage they were loading onto aircraft. Federal officials say the suspects took jewelry, electronics, and personal items from the checked baggage of passengers on British Airways flights. The six are now facing federal charges and could get up to five years in prison if convicted. Tacoma, Washington. Two rail cars exploded in flames, shutting down a railroad line and one of Washington's busiest highways. Workers were unloading the freight cars when they first noticed the flames. The fire forced the evacuation of all businesses within a six-block radius. The rail cars were filled with denatured alcohol, making the fire difficult to put out, but no one was injured. Washington, D.C. Emotions ran high in the Supreme Court as the justices argued over whether cross burning is protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution. Justice Clarence Thomas condemned cross burning as a symbol of hate and oppression, and other justices argued that cross burning could incite violence. The Supreme Court is considering the constitutionality of a Virginia state law that bans cross burning. Richland Hills, Texas. Rescue crews had to dig out a construction worker who became trapped when a trench he was working in collapsed. The man was part of a crew digging a trench for a new sewage line when the walls fell on top of him. The man was trapped in dirt up to his waist and it took crews two hours to dig him out. He was taken to a nearby hospital for observation. In tonight's health and fitness report, mammograms are designed, of course, to detect breast cancer, but new research indicates they may also help predict an illness that is much more devastating to women, heart disease. The Mayo Clinic study found routine mammograms may help detect heart disease, calcification, or calcium deposits unmistakable to radiologists as abnormal breast arteries. Women in the study with significant breast artery calcifications were 20% more likely to have heart disease than women with none, even when there were no symptoms. Given the fact that 365,000 women die of heart disease each year, compared to about 40,000 from breast cancer, doctors have begun debating whether mammograms should now be used to screen for heart disease. The American Heart Association calls the research preliminary, but says if it holds true, mammograms could offer an important piece of information in identifying women at risk of dying from the nation's number one killer of women, which is not breast cancer, but heart disease. That's your health and fitness for tonight, Al. And that, let me add uh, my congratulations to you and David. <laughs> Thank and you very wish much. you the best. You're a couple of ter pretty terrific people. Thank you. And Thank you welcome. very much. Okay, coming up next tonight on News at 10, a four-year-old girl gives her teacher drugs for Christmas. We'll have details on that story. And still ahead, you're going to hear some hot tunes played on some pretty cool instruments. Bring in the new year with the most spectacular party in town, the Rose Parade on KTLA 5. It's a magical day filled with incredible moments and unforgettable memories. And nobody brings it to you like KTLA. With the best camera locations, stereo surround sound, commercial free coverage, and the parade experts, Bob Eubanks and Stephanie Edwards. Don't miss the 114th Annual Rose Parade. Live coverage begins at 6 a.m. New Year's Day on KTLA. Commercial free thanks to Southwest Airlines. The Business Report is brought to you by Pacific Care. Thousands of gifts for less than $10. Only at Ross. I have an apology to make for knitting you a present rather than buying something you'd enjoy. I thought each present was a little piece of me, a person who, I'm now told, isn't very good at knitting. I'm sorry. This year, I'm shopping at Staples. You should, too. They have the exciting technology gifts everyone wants. And this month, you can get free delivery from Staples.com. But you can't get a macrame mouse pad. Holiday shopping <laughs> done at Staples. 
At Volkswagen, we want you to remember that buying a car is a long-term commitment. Yeah, everything sounds perfect in the beginning, but you want to be sure. You want to know, does it come with over 50 standard features and one of the highest resale values in the market today? And we'll love you for years to come. Yeah. So see your local dealer soon. They'll work with you to get you into a 2003 Volkswagen. Dude, you are freaking me out. Volkswagen, the cars and the deals are for real. Toys! The Walmart toy department. I see kids run down here and have all kinds of fun. I love toys! Everyone should play with toys. Scatty doors! Hot meals! My personal favorite, the breath collection. Have you seen her jacket? No. We got your lead pad. Little kid bikes, mountain bikes, bikes for people my size. Rapunzel Barbie. Ah! I got a lot on my mind right now. Low prices. Wow, that's cool. This holiday, keep your whole family connected with extra connections from AT&T Wireless. Start with one phone line for $34.99 a month and add up to three more lines for $19.99 each. Share unlimited night and weekend minutes and 500 anytime minutes with domestic long distance included and no roaming charges across the U.S. Hello? Gotcha. Hurry in now and get up to four free Nokia 8390 phones. That's M-Life, your mobile life made better by AT&T Wireless. Save 30 to 60% on thousands of gifts. Only at Ross. A four-year-old girl in Massachusetts presented her teacher with a surprise holiday gift. It was a bag of marijuana. Police say when the teacher asked the child where she got the bag of marijuana, she said, from my mommy. But the mother denied having any drugs in the bag, so far no charges have been filed. However, police did file a report of suspected child abuse with social services. In San Diego County, a man is under arrest tonight after being trapped inside a chimney for five hours. It happened at the recreation center of a mobile home park in San Isidro. Firefighters used chainsaws and jackhammers to cut through the fireplace in order to rescue 19-year-old Josh Perez. He told his rescuers that he and his two friends were stargazing on the roof right when he accidentally fell into the chimney. Well, police officers didn't believe that. They took Perez and his friends into custody and charged them with burglary. And now tomorrow's Los Angeles Times headlines tonight. The CIA has completed an initial assessment of Iraq's banned weapons documents. One official said there's really nothing new. He says it all appears to be recycled material of similar documents that were delivered to the United Nations in 1996 and 97 and rejected as inadequate and incomplete. The Bush administration has moved ahead with its plan to reduce the risk of forest fires. New rules were proposed that would allow more thinning of forests in national parks. Forests and other federally owned land. Environmentalists claim the Bush plan is a payback to the timber industry and would damage federal lands. Once again today, Senate Republican leader Trent Lott apologized for a statement he made at Strom Thurmond's 100th birthday celebration last week. During an interview, Trent Lott said that he never meant his comments to be construed as an endorsement of segregation. Lott said he was sorry, it was a mistake. Privately, there's concern among some Republicans that his Senate post could be in jeopardy. And you can read those stories and more in depth in tomorrow's editions of the Los Angeles Times. Our longtime friend and colleague Stan Chambers was honored today with another award in Studio City. Stan received the Golden Buccaneer Award at the annual holiday benefit of the Print Interactive Radio and Television Educational Society. Stan was recognized as an admired and respected journalist and a role model in his acceptance speech. Stan spoke about the media's holiday spirit. We like to be included and be a part of things. So this is the way the broadcasting industry is. It's, it's a great moment where we all can get together and get something done. And when you get the Christmas time, we get that glow, that feeling of really accomplishing something. Then I was thinking, you know, we're owned by... The and uh, once again, it's time for congratulations here on News at 10. And this time, to our colleague, Stan Chambers. A police officer in India has set a new world diving record. 
and she may have endured the world's most painful belly flop in the process. The 29-year-old man climbed to the top of a platform 126 feet in the air. He jumped into the water below, but he didn't exactly nail the dive. Oof, the man hit the water flat and face first. Doctors treated him for minor injuries. Here's another look for you. Again, he was not seriously hurt. He definitely did not win any points for style. But his painful plunge broke a 68-year-old record for the world's tallest dive. In somewhat easier sports, the uh, finalists for this year's Heisman Trophy winner as college football's top player have been named, and the winner will be announced Saturday night in New York. One of those five finalists is USC quarterback Carson Palmer, who is trying to become the first West Coast player to win since SC's Marcus Allen in 1981. Palmer completed nearly 63% of his passes for 3,639 yards and 32 touchdowns, leading the Trojans to the Orange Bowl game against Iowa on January 2nd. The other finalists are Iowa quarterback Brad Banks, top-ranked Miami's Ken Dorsey, another QB, Penn State running back Larry Johnson, and sophomore running back Willis McGahey, also of Miami. Shaquille O'Neal lashed out at some of his teammates after the Lakers' 106-102 loss to the Golden State Warriors last night. Shaq poured in 36 points and grabbed nine rebounds himself, but did not point the finger specifically at any one of his teammates. In fact, what he said was, quote, talk to the blankety-blanks that ain't doing nothing. Don't talk to me, unquote. College basketball at the sports arena. USC evened its record at 3-3 with a 78-63 win over Cal State Fullerton. Rory O'Neill scored a career-high 22 points to lead the Trojans. The Titans fell to 1-5. On their way to a Western Conference best 39 points, the Dallas Stars had not lost at home in regulation this season. That didn't phase the Kings one bit, though, as they played quite possibly their best game of the season tonight in Big D. The Kings' top line of Allison, Deadmarsh, and Palfi was responsible for the Kings scoring. Deadmarsh scored in the first period. Jason Allison scored there in the second. And less than seven minutes later, it was Ziggy Palfi's turn, scoring on the wrister his ninth goal of the season. And that was enough for Kings goalie Jamie Storr, who stopped all 35 Dallas shots, including this spectacular save in the third period. Break away from Bonanno. Looking for a shorthander. He shoots. Hello. Save block Jamie Storr on the breakaway. Storr recorded his 14th career shutout as the Kings pick up their second consecutive 3 0 win. Ducks defenseman Frederick Olison playing in his 1,000th career NHL game tonight, and he celebrated by opening the scoring on a power play slap shot in the first period against the Washington Capitals at the pond. In the second period, Pavel Trinka was just trying to dump the puck deep into the cap zone when it caromed off the boards and into the net. 2 0 Ducks. Goalie Jean-Sebastien Giguere had 26 saves en route to a 3-0 shutout of the Caps. And the Ducks have something the Lakers don't this season, a three-game winning streak. At the Long Beach Arena, Ice Dogs goalie Danielle Dubé became just the third woman to start a professional hockey game. Featured here on KTLA three weeks ago, Danielle stopped 18 of the 22 shots on goal by the San Diego Goals. One of the four San Diego goals against her came from Clayton Reed, who went top shelf on Dubé early in the second period, giving the goals a 2-0 lead. I'm sure it's not the starting debut Danielle had hoped for. However, the Ice Dogs only managed to score one goal themselves as the Dogs lost 4-1. And here's a story filled with the holiday spirit. The Oakland Raiders signed a player today who's been working as a telephone operator the past two months. Tony Lukens who was cut by the Chicago Bears in training camp, joined the Raiders practice squad and hopes to make the active roster as a kick returner. His NFL bio reads, no data available. On the practice squad, he'll make about $2,000 a week. But Hal and Lynette, that's a heck of a lot more than he was making as an AT&T operator. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, Tony. Now, still ahead here on News at 10, it's, uh, I guess you call it one cool concert, but it won't last very long. I'm going to show you why. And here are tonight's lottery numbers for you. The Super Lotto Plus, 3, 17, 29, 32, 35, and the mega number is 14. The Fantasy 5, 2, 16, 17, 21, and 25. The Midday Daily 3, 0, 7, and 1. The Evening Daily 3, 4, 0, and 0. The Daily Derby in first place, number 3, Hot Shot. Second place, number 8, Gorgeous George. Third place, number 12, Lucky Charms. The race time is 1, 40, 60. We'll be right back.
every good, there is an evil. I can feel everything you feel. And to conquer it, Fire at will. you must face it. This Friday, the final journey begins. Star Trek Nemesis, rated PG-13. Friday in theaters everywhere. Body pain? Oh. Back pain? Now relief is just a shuffle away. Uh -huh. Introducing new Bear Extra Strength Back and Body. It soothes aching muscles and sore backs with the trusted strength of Bear Aspirin to work effectively at the site of pain. Plus, a special pain relief enhancer. <sighs> Nothing works better than Bear Back and Body. Not Advil, not Tylenol. Get moving again, pain free. New Bear Back and Body. I heard it defies gravity. I heard its brakes could stop a freight train. I heard it can fly. You won't believe what people are saying about this car until you drive it. Test drive the BMW 7 Series at an authorized BMW center to see for yourself. Do you have to go to the airport to rent from Hertz? Not exactly. Close to you. There are hundreds of Hertz local edition locations all across the country. Close to you. Come into your Hertz local edition. Close to you. Or we'll come and get you. the Marshalls Family Athletic Wear event. 50% of the top brand names. You'll have to see it to believe it. But hurry, it's going on right now. At Bristol Farms, we're known for our great floral departments. And in every store, there's a designer just like me. We get beautiful orchids from Singapore. We have a great selection of cut flowers, Gerber daisies, hydrangea, roses. We have a department full of both green and blooming plants, a large selection of fresh cut flowers, as well as gorgeous arrangements in our coolers. Some of our flowers are so fresh that they're growing in the field this morning. My absolute favorite flower of all time is the Gloriosa Lily. The Sports Report is brought to you by Mercury Insurance. Germany has been uh, the home to some of the world's greatest composers, Beethoven, Bach, Wagner, and Bruckner, but even their musical compositions uh, could not be considered this cool. A group of artists makes instruments completely out of ice. It takes several days to carve the one-ton frozen blocks into working xylophones and other ice instruments, and the musicians must make certain that each sculpture does play correctly in tune. The cool concerts usually last about 10 minutes, not because the group doesn't know a sufficient number of songs, they just have to finish before the instruments melt. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess that's where the term cool concert came from. Yeah, it sure is. Yes. Okay, that's news at 10 for tonight. Thanks for joining. Don't forget to watch the KTLA Morning News beginning at 5.30 tomorrow morning with Sharon Tay and Emma Miller. We all bid you a very good night and congratulations to Lynette and David <laughs> once again. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 10 p.m. <laughs>